Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, September 27th, 2019, and this is our weekly video. We'll take, always, as always, take a look back at uh, last week's eBay auction results, see what's going on, and a look ahead at uh, Catawiki and see what they've got coming up. A couple of things. Um, Catawiki seemed to have been down for part of today. They're back up now. I don't know what's going on. So if you tried to access the site and your little wheel on your Internet Explorer just kept spinning, that's why. I don't know what the problem was. And uh, a couple of you have mentioned that if some some non-antique things have slipped onto that site, and I agree with you. I've, I've spent actually some time this week looking through and came up with a few things that I think look pretty bad, and uh, I'll be in touch with them next week to see what's going on. Okay, can't have that happening. All righty, now um, on to uh, last week's eBay auction results. There was, there was some pretty good results last week. By the way, I hope all of you took time to look at the um, Ming Blue and White video that was put out by the British Museum with uh, Jessica Harrison Hall. Great video. Uh, there were a lot of con there were some comments on it over on the uh, forum this week about it. I noticed, and um, let's see how things did. Let's get started. All right, in here uh, there was this. This is a really nice Canton um, uh, platter. It's a classic one, but has this uh, very nice meat strainer on it. A lot of these were the, these were made just as platters. Occasionally, they made them with these meat strainers that sat on top of them like that. Uh, they were made for export, obviously, to the West. This was a pretty big platter. It was 18 inches in diameter, which is a very, very good size for these, and it was in good condition. And it did pretty well. It brought $481, but that's not a big price for one of these. These used to be worth more, um, but the uh, the export market, especially Canton, as many of you know, has, has slipped over the years, which makes it much more affordable. Um, uh, if you if you want to be able to buy nice uh, porcelain, I always su suggest you buy export porcelain these days. Uh, the prices are quite favorable. All righty, now, and you get great quality on top of it. Then there was this, this uh, sort of late Ming dragon platter. The rim was fairly well ground off on it. It had, lost a lot, had a lot of fritting, and I think they eventually just sort of polished the rim down. But this is a nice old pla plate uh, in a nice deep cobalt blue, uh, and uh, it, did, it did fine in the end. It brought $810. All right, but that's a, a nice plate, classical design with multiple dragons, and uh, I had a couple of inquiries about it, and it went to the high side of what I thought it would bring, but that's fine. It's a nice plate. And uh, on to this. This was uh, Chamberlain Antiques, as many of you know, had a sale last week. They had a lot of things, uh, and uh, some of them did pretty well. And I thought this was very attractive. It's a planter. It's about 14 inches in diameter, good size. But what I liked about it, it's a late 19th, 19th century one, but what I liked about it was that the gilding on it was in still very, very good condition. It did have a line in the bottom, but who cares? It's a planter. You put a liner in the bottom anyway if you're going to put a plant in it. And uh, here it is, nice uh, vases drawn all over it, jade books and all that business. And uh, in the end, it did okay, but it wasn't a crazy price either, either $1,324. I hope one of you bought it and you put a plant in it. These look great with big bushes in them. Really fun. And then over here, this was something else that Josh had up. was this nice Kung Shi period rose water bottle with silver, later silver mount. The silver was all, nearly always added in Europe once they got there. Uh, but this was a nice one, good cobalt color, nice white, white, white porcelain uh, with precious objects and so forth. And in the end, this did pretty well too. It brought $898. He had some things that brought more. Uh, one or two of them, a few of them were things that had sold before and evidently didn't get paid for, so he relisted them and uh, sold them again unreserved. So there you go. And uh, then over here to this plate, this Guangxu plate. I had a few inquiries about this week, and it did better than I thought it would. It's a, a very nice plate. It looks to be Mark and period to me, blue and white, neatly drawn. And uh, it ended up selling for $2,498. That's a very strong price. Uh, it's a nice plate, but I think that was on sort of on the upper edge. Uh, but but Markin period in China still is king. And I suspect a Chinese uh, buyer uh, latched onto that and uh, grabbed it. But it's a nice plate, though, nonetheless. And then over here to this was this uh, 20th century Famille Rose uh, play, uh, vase with a Guangxu mark. I think this was not, I don't think this was a Guangxu uh, 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 period vase. I think this vase was probably later, probably Republic. But unbelievably fine decoration. Just really great decoration on it right here and here 
in here. Uh, very, very finely shaded, good bright enamels, nice clear white porcelain. Uh, here's a picture of the bottom of it. And uh, it says China on there. And I think this was probably uh, after the Guangzhou period, but superb quality. The quality on this was fabulous. Don't let the China name bother you. It apparently didn't bother many people. It still sold for a little over $3,000. $3,011, but that was a really, really pretty little vase. Nice example. And then over here to this uh, 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 Noyne Straits uh, dish with a phoenix on it, beautiful famille rose flowers all over it, and those nice light green uh, rocky outcroppings and leaves, and, and a beautifully shaped rim with a, a Buddhist uh, wheels and so forth running around the outside. Nice looking dish. And uh, this did pretty well. It brought $1,196. And this was not an enormous plate, eight, eight and three quarter inches. Not a very, very big plate, but uh, a nice, nice decoration. Very attractive, like that. And then over here, this was the, uh, uh, the uh, figure with the scepter, Famille Rose. We had one not too dissimilar from this one uh, uh, not long ago. Uh, these were generally always made in the 19th, I mean, in the 20th century. Uh, good example. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. It had a couple of stamp marks from the maker. Okay, and, uh, but good decoration up there. It had a little bit of a damage here on the back of the head, which probably held the price back a bit. But nice, clear uh, colors, good enameling all over. And uh, somebody will get that little bit of damage fixed. And it brought $2,000. All right, and this is, the, they called this, the, the figure is Lou. And uh, it is, but very good size, 62 centimeters. So that's just about two feet tall. Good size vase, uh, good size statue. Um, and I think that was a pretty reasonable buy at that size, certainly. All right, and then over here is that nifty uh, Kangxi uh, molded uh, sh uh, shaped rim uh, uh, blue and white dish with all the little, uh, you know, they did them with uh, sort of a pencil sketch when they, when, they, when they colored these in. If you take the time to look at it, you can see how they do such a nice job outlining them and then thousands and thousands of little strokes to fill it in to shade the piece. Here's a picture of the back. There was a little bit of a, a tiny bit of damage on the back of it. And there you can see the ribbing, the shaping of the plate. Uh, this was a nice thing. And I think it went very reasonably. I don't think $271 for that was too much. That was a nice example. And you don't see these very often. Um, uh, the, the more typical ones are just, you know, outlined and, in, 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 you know, colored in in cobalt blue. Um, these, these penciled in ones are a bit rarer and uh, uh, rather interesting if you're collecting Kang Shi things. It's nice to have one in your collection. And that was a good chance to get one. The, the price was fair on that. All right, and then over here uh, to the 19th century Famille Rose vase with the inscriptions all over it. This did very well. This, this was a, a good looking uh, vase, nice looking bottom on that, that nice uh, uh, late 19th century foot. Uh, good decoration, nice orange peel in the glaze. Not that ri uh, super ripply orange peel that you see on the reproduction, but sort of an uneven uh, uh, orange peel, which is uh, m better. It's just what you want to see. And uh, it ended up selling for $4,150. Antiques Copenhagen had that. Nice looking vase. And then here we have another Nornia Straits uh, dish. This one had a hairline in it and it held the price back but a rather attractive pattern with that lime green ground and then filled in with uh, Famille Rose flowers and in a solid pink group of flowers down here, nicely outlined and so forth. And uh, it went fairly reasonable, $86. That's, that's, the, that's what a, a hairline can do. And this was actually a charger, it was 13 inches. The seller had it up as 18th century. It's not 18th century um, in, in my opinion, but, but a nice looking dish. All right, and now over to this, the, uh, the uh, Mother of Pearl carved box. This is a very rare box. Caught my eye when it went up because it has a, a front, the front panel on it has uh, some sort of allegorical scene um, um, with the you know, Western writing on it, and cherubs and so forth. The back has the more typical um, uh, uh, counter uh, Mother of Pearl counter decoration on it with the cross hatch border and the circles and all that business. But it's a nicely done box. Here's the side. It's all framed in silver. Pretty rare bird. And uh, in the end, it did just fine. It brought $1,504. This was a seller over in the, in the UK that had this. And a uh, nice box. Attractive little box. 
And these are very small. These are only, you know, a couple inches long. And uh, we'll hop over to the next one here, the pair of sandalwood card cases. Uh, these are in very good condition. They, they look like maybe they'd been in a box for a long time, tucked away, but it's a pair, a pair of sandalwood boxes. The uh, pairs of these boxes are actually quite unusual. Uh, they don't turn up very often. The PBD Essex Museum in Salem has some pairs of these in ivory and in sandalwood. But this one was beautifully carved, nice condition, and uh, ended up selling for $1,788. <clears throat> but they were a pair, and uh, pairs are, are very hard to come by. Okay, and now over to the dragon. There's a lot of silk, by the way, coming up. If you're a silk buyer, stick around because there's quite a bit of silk coming up next week. So check the newsletter. Uh, we'll have them in there. Uh, robes, uh, panels, uh, hangings, and all this other stuff. Uh, but this is a nice uh, 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 dragon roundel, uh, beautiful colors, very fine gilded uh, needlework. Um, the gold threads are quite good. The, 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 uh, the dragon has a very great expression on its face. Its eyes are coming out, bulging out of its head, and it's chasing the pearl up here. Nice looking example. And uh, these always do well. This one brought $1,476. We've had others uh, of this type turn up on, on eBay in the last uh, eight months or so. And they all seem to bring twelve to $1,600, pretty much in that range. We had one that brought over $2,000, but it was, a, it was a particularly large one. Uh, this one was about a foot in diameter. So it's a nice size. Uh, the one that brought over that, I think, was around 17 inches wide. It was a big, big one. All right, and now over here to the Chinese Amari Goose uh, teapot. Uh, I like this. This was a very, very pretty pot and uh, had very nice soft colors. And the gilding on it uh, in particular was in very good shape. Often the gilding on here, the way the bird is colored in with gold, and there's a lot of outlining that's often all washed away on teapots because they get used so much. And uh, in the end, this went pretty reasonably. I think this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good price uh, for anybody who collects teapots. Three hundred and twenty-five dollars for a Kung Shi teapot. Uh, that was a very nice buy. It had a little chip on nick on the spout, but easy to fix, and uh, that was a good deal. That was a very good deal. And then over here, there was also this Kung Shi bowl, the shaped rim, about a seven-inch bowl. Uh, he didn't put the um, uh, dimensions on the uh, listing for some reason. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Um, 200, God, millimeters. 205 millimeter wide, so that's 20 centimeters. So it's about about uh, seven inches, eight inches. Yeah, seven or eight inch ball. Okay, good. He did include it. Um, uh, guys over there in, in, in the Netherlands, if you're watching this, I love your stuff. This is this is the the the, the, the dealer, um, uh, the ceramics and collectibles, Shangri-La. Uh, you help your buyers a lot if you if you if you put inches in as well as millimeters. It's just for you if you're watching. Use inches and millimeters or inches and centimeters, but uh, uh, just just a suggestion. At any rate, this was a very nice bowl, and um, it ended up doing pretty well. It brought uh, three hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Not a crazy price though. That was a good fair price for a Kung Chi bowl. Um, uh, a little bit on the low side, but still a nice thing. But it had some chips and fretting, and that does impact them. And now over here, I love these. It's a very nice pair of um, uh, 18th century Blanc de Chine figures that were good size. These were eight or nine inches tall, um, uh, very nice even glazes on them, and uh, they were sold by R.N.G. McPherson originally over in, in, in Europe. He's a very good dealer, good reputation. He's got his stickers on it. There's the bottoms. Uh, nice looking pair of figures, and uh, they ended up selling for just $506. I think that was a, a very nice buy for two of these Chinlung period figures. Quite nice. And uh, over to here, another Kung Shi bowl. This is a you know, sort of a clumpets bowl um, with the averted rim and, and, and done with nice enamels on it. Very attractive little bowl. Good clear yellow and uh, ended up selling for $663. Again, Perfectly rare price, I, 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 a fair price rather. I'm glad to see this because the prices seem to be sort of getting a little more reasonable um, these days. Maybe it, maybe it's the uh, trade argument between the U.S. and China and every place else, but um, that that uh, seems to be a little bit softer than the prices might have been um, a year or two ago. All right, and then over here, the repair of Republic vases. The seller had these up as, as um, I mean, uh, 1950s vases. The seller had these up as Republic. 
I don't think they were. I think they were from the 50s. That's my, my feeling on them. Here's a picture of the bottom with the chin lung mark on it and these presentation boxes and uh, eggshell porcelain. And my gut, I think these are probably from the 50s, and I think everybody knew they were from the 50s. But beautiful quality. Beautiful, beautiful quality. And they ended up selling for $1,735, which is perfectly fine. Very nice. And then pop over here. The last thing we're gonna that sold that we're gonna talk about is this. This was uh, put up by a, a fellow who we, I, I've corresponded with down in Florida. He's a good dealer, a nice guy. Joe is his first name, Joseph. And it is his Celadon uh, vase with uh, underglazed blue. And the, this had that sort of relief worked figures. So all of the, the blue areas are slightly raised. Nice looking uh, uh, bamboo uh, arrow handles on the side. It had been drilled, but this is an old vase, 18th century, maybe early 19th, but nice old one. It's got bits of glue and crap on it when it was stuck onto a stand at one point. Uh, and it has a hole in the bottom, obviously, because it had been lamped. What a stunning lamp, my God. This is a big vase. This thing was, uh, what was it, 20 something inches tall? Um, 24 and a half inches tall. Yeah, nice looking thing. Went for $2,113. I think that was a perfectly fair price for that. Uh, good looking, had the uh, um, uh, original rim. It hadn't been ground down. There's that nice brown dressing on the rim. The more I look at it, the more yeah, I think it's 18th century. And uh, a good looking thing. He, he sold it as 19th. He tends to be conservative, but uh, that was a good looking base. Nice looking thing. And now let's take a look at a few things that are coming up this week. There's, there's a few things coming up. We're having some trouble with eBay. They have changed, many of you have noticed this, they have changed the, how their search results render. Well, they've added some new features, which I'm happy to see, like you can add things to your watch list without having to open the item and hit the watch button. There's a little uh, eyeball watch thing now just on the list of returns from a search. But what's happening is when we found that when we create searches and then we go to the next page, uh, it goes from having 800 items down to you know 70 items suddenly and we don't know why we've contacted them it's a technical issue they are as they say aware of it and we're hoping they'll fix it all right first thing is this there's a couple of these um kangxi guglets on here um chinese amari kangxi guglets this one has an obvious repair on the top uh, if you're up for getting things restored um, this might be a little project for you because it's a fairly attractive thing and the seller also has another one up on them I don't remember if that one needs uh, is it needs uh, repair as well. Hold on a second. Let's take a look. We'll do this on the fly really quickly. If it'll open, let's get, try to get the thing to open. Here we go. Come on. Maybe we'll have to come back to it. All right. We'll come back to it in a second because it's, it's a little slow right now today. Um, is this Famille Rose dish rather unusual ground pattern on this? Very nice uh, uh, decoration. Uh, 18th century plate. There's the back of it. Uh, it looked like it had something on here that got scraped off, and uh, that that's coming. Um, that's up this week. It closes Sunday. These are things that are online right now. Here's the other vase. Okay, this one is in perfect condition. Okay, so he got a pair of them. Is what it is. This fellow got a pair. This is the one that's fine. Brown dressing. Nice looking Chinese Amari vase, and uh, obviously a pair. I, just, I haven't checked the measurements, but I think they're probably the same height. And so you have one that's perfect and one that has a has need of, of a quality restoration around the mouth. But if you did them, boy, it would be nice to have a pair of these. These tend to be sort of an attractive size, usually around 8 inches. Uh, what's the size on this thing here? Scroll down here. Nine and a half inches. There you go. All right. So you buy them both, get one of them cleaned up, and you've got a pair. That'd be, those would be nice. They'd look very pretty together on a shelf or a mantle. And uh, we've talked about that one, and now over to this one. This is a, a sort of an interesting late 18th, early 19th century export terrine. And what I like is that big pod finial on top. The, the pattern here is a, almost a stock pattern that was made on a lot of Chinese porcelain for, the, for export. And they use the same pattern on uh, porcelain that often turns up in the Middle East. But I love the big green seed pod finial up here. That's rather unusual. It's a nice looking thing. And uh, it makes it interesting. And it just went up. It's got six days to go. It's got one bid, and it's at $1.22. So there you go. That'll be in the newsletter this week. And then um, uh, this is on this week. It's a nice-looking 36-centimeter. Uh, it's a charger, about 14-inch Wan Lee dish with two phoenixes and rue heads in the center and so forth. Nice Wan Lee dish. 
This is uh, the ceramics and the collectibles uh, sellers over in the Netherlands. The one I was giving a hard time to a minute ago about dimensions, um, they do everything in centimeters. It drives me. The, U the United States never went to never went metric, so um, it, 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 my math isn't that good. So, at any rate, um, there it is. Nice looking plate, and we'll see how that does. It is a charger, so it'll probably do pretty well. All right, and then this, this is an opened robe, a uh, nice looking robe. Actually, the fellow that owns this uh, sent me a note about it this week, wondering what I thought of it. I said, it's dandy. And uh, he put it up, and there it is. It'll be in the newsletter. Uh, not late 19th, early 20th century example of silk in good condition. It's up to $101. It just went up last night. This is the 10-day sale, and uh, let me put that on the watch list while I'm looking at it, and we'll add that to the, uh, to the, uh, to the weekly newsletter. Now, another seller has th these up. There's uh, f three of these good-looking enameled uh, late 19th, early 20th century Yi Ching uh, teapots. Uh, this is a good square one, very popular form, a nicely decorated, it's a little bit dirty, uh, and uh, right now it's up to $47. It's got six days to go, and that'll probably jump up a bit toward the end. This is a seller in uh, uh, North Carolina, a state consigner. They get good things, and we'll take a look at that. Um, on the newsletter. And then there's this, this 18th century armorial export platter uh, with Chinese landscape uh, uh, figures in a landscape scene. Quite attractive. Unfortunately, the, f the f photographs on here are awfully dark because uh, this is a very, these are very striking plates. I've seen them before. And uh, because of the way he shot it, it looks sort of gray and dark. This is a nice white porcelain plate good clear yellows and uh, very well done and uh, right now this plate is up to three hundred and forty three dollars and it closes on Sunday but if you like very pretty armorial export platters it's a 13 inch one that's a nice one and then you have this this Japanese uh, uh, Kosomitsuki uh, um, uh, Japanese Arita dish 17th century uh, but beautiful condition 17th yes Yes, yeah, 17th century, 1680s, uh, but lovely quality. It's got uh, three days to go. It's up to only $33. That's a nice pattern, all right? So if you, if, you, if you like early Japanese stuff, check that out. That'll be in the newsletter. And then this Republican period uh, planter with the 100 boys pattern all over it. This is a very pretty planter. Um, there's a picture of the bottom, all right, but very good detail. Really good detail. The way the kids are drawn all over it. Lots of detail up here in the pine trees. How well they shaded it all in. All of the all of the uh, uh, scaling work done on the tree. The way the rocks are done. There's a lot of brush strokes on this thing. A lot of work went into it, and uh, beautifully done. And kids playing instruments, and we'll see how that does. It's up to eleven hundred and eighty-five dollars, and it closes Sunday as well. A lot of stuff seems to be closing on Sunday this week. And then over here to this is this nice looking uh, uh, 19th century uh, salmon colored silk with a shao character in the middle and these big lotus flowers floating around it with other floral devices. It is in nice condition. This is a good, this is a good panel. And this is Jade Duck has this. He's got a number of things up this week. He, he, he sent me a, uh, uh, Tom sent me a note saying he's, he's got a listing going up. If I take a look, see what I thought. And I, I said, gee, they're nice. So we, we included them. And um, I saw a couple of things actually before he even contacted me and was planning on putting them in, then he reminded me. All right, this is 35 by 18 inches, nice looking panel. And uh, there's some other pieces too, and we'll have them in the newsletter. All right, and then over here, uh, this is something that's up on Catawiki right now. It's a very nice little footed uh, pot with a handle and uh, uh, Kung Shi uh, figures all over it. This, uh, this has uh, uh, about 22 hours to close. It'll close on Saturday, um, EU. So uh, if you like that, check it out. It will be at the bottom of the newsletter page where you keep the Catawiki stuff. And this nice 18th century uh, dish, uh, just a very nice clean example. And there's quite a bit of stuff on there this week. Not as much as there has been in other weeks, but qu uh, quite a bit. But as I said, I saw some stuff on there this week that I, 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 I didn't really like. And I'm going to get a hold of them and see if they can uh, um, uh, straighten that out because I, I don't think they were antiques. I think they, may, may, they made a mistake. All right. I know they try hard and they look at a lot of material. But that's, that's the way it goes sometimes, all right? 
And uh, if you haven't subscribed to us here on YouTube yet, please do subscribe. We do these every single week. And we're doing a video next week on the uh, auction results from a week and a half ago in New York. And we'll be doing another one on the upcoming sales in Hong Kong because they've got some stellar stuff. I just need to set aside the time to do it. And uh, come over to bitamount.com and uh, 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 sign up for the weekly newsletter and uh, browse around, use the catalogs, whatever it is you want to do. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, I'll see you all next week. And we'll try to get those videos up for you next week, too. And uh, we'll let you know when we do. All righty. Thank you. Bye-bye.